Log entry, the catch, Scarlet Queen, Philip Carney, master. Position, 119 degrees, 12 minutes east, 21 degrees, 7 minutes north. Wind fresh, sky fair. Remarks, departed port of Swatow, China, 9 a.m. after a bout with Avila, the Portuguese. Reason for bout, the story of the eight historic periods. Swatow sprawled loosely out at the mouth of the river Han, 180 miles north of Hong Kong, is a city of great filth, of roads dusty or muddy according to the weather, of warehouses rich with pewter wear and Chinese linen, of citizens poor with malnutrition and a variety of resulting diseases. And to us, a city of great menace after the affair in Shanghai's street of weeping women. The Scarlet Queen knifed up against the sullen, muddy current. As I swung her into a narrow channel that forked off from the main river, I noticed an English-made sedan keeping pace with us on a road parallel to Strum. The Chinese characters on its side designated it as a local police car. I'd expected a reception, but not quite the kind we got after we docked and a smiling, uniformed figure left the car and scrambled aboard. Uh, which one is Philip Carney, a master of this excellent ship? I am. And you? Gallagher, chief mate. What's up, officer? You have the admiration I cherish for those of great heroic action. Well, knowing what this is all about will affect my reception and stay. The newspapers in all the coastal cities of South China have paid you a most honorary tribute oh. in two languages for your intelligent bravery in the safe rescue of Nan Hua, the beautiful daughter of the illustrious Ku Chi Kang from the hands of Lord's kidnappers. And what's all? Also kindness in saving half some parrot. Your great character make the efforts of your enemies as those of earthworm attacking cobra. I have spoken. Yeah. Thanks very much, Charlie. It is yeah. Swatow's honor to give you gracious welcome. Yeah. It is order from highest office of humble Swatow police that you remain in protective custody. Wait a minute. In order that we may better send from your admired persons the blows from any adventure. Oh, well, we can take care of ourselves. It is understood. <laughs> but uh, but uh, your humble officer is powerless under weight of order from high office. You will come. Two more uniformed figures jumped out of the car at his shouted orders, and Nanhua, Gallagher, and I were hustled off the queen and jammed into the rear seat of the sedan. A minute later, I asked our smiling officer a question. He was in the front seat. And when he turned around to answer it, he was holding an automatic on us. That's when the custody dropped any appearance of being protective. And so Mutual continues The Voyage of the Scarlet Queen, written by Gil Dowd and Bob Tolman, and starring Elliot Lewis. Scarlet Queen, proudest ship to plow the seas, bound for uncharted adventure. Every week, a complete entry in the log, and every week, a league further in the strange voyage of the Scarlet Queen. I didn't know whether the three men in the front seat were genuine SWAT cow cops or not when we left the harbor area. But as long as that automatic was staring me in the face, I figured it didn't make any difference. We skirted the business district and bumped along a dirt road that followed the riverbank. About five miles out of town, we pulled up in front of a lonely two-story building that looked like it had once been an inn. Our guards pulled us out of the car, frisked us, and shoved us into the building. The room was fitted out with rickety furniture and two men. One of them was a heavy-set, swarthy Latin... The other was Nanhua's Shanghai kidnapper, Colonel Smythe Forrester. Come in, come in, come in. I, I trust you all had a pleasant sail down from Shanghai. Oh, come now, don't be a faint heart. There are accommodations for all. Sit down, sit down, we'll have a chat. I've heard you talk before. I didn't like it. Oh, it's water under the bridge, Captain. Come, Nanhua, be seated. I will stay here. Oh, relax, Nanhua. Go ahead, sit down. There you are, my dear. You may sit close under the protecting arm of your gallant captain. Uh, 
Mr. Gallagher? I can find my own, you... <laughs> now then, may I present one of my associates, Mr. Avila? Mr. Avila has journeyed up from Hong Kong. <laughs> uh, I am most happy to be here. All right, that makes us all great friends. It's a charming circle. What do we do with it? <laughs> Come off it, Captain. And now, Captain Carney... I can make known to you the splendid news that is the subject as well as the cause of this meeting. Nanua, this should please you particularly. Your father is well and in no danger. You lie. Where is my father? Oh, I understand your natural inclination toward distrust, my dear. But hear me out. Why don't you get off of your fancy language and say something? Mr. Gallagher, please, please, please. The news is this, gentlemen. At this very moment, Mr. Kang and Mr. Constantino are together in Hong Kong. Peaceably, peaceably discussing the common problem. This the $10 million prize that has been the basis for the many discomfitures which have befallen all concerned. There now. <laughs> Is that not a stunning bit of news? I do not believe it. You are lying. Well, then permit me to refer you to Mr. Avila, who has himself just brought me the information. <laughs> it is true. I saw the two together myself. They are making business together. What's the deal? It is somewhat the same as dividing the value of the treasure. If Mr. Kang will turn over $5 million... Uh, Senor Constantino agrees to return this young lady, Nanhua, to her father. And Senor Constantino is saved the expense of following you, Captain Carney, over the other half of the world. And at the same time, well, <laughs> there was always the chance we might lose. Now it is a good gamble from both of the sides. You got a funny idea of gambling. Yeah, I'll bet you're a real plunger in a game of stud. <laughs> uh, talk how you like. Uh, call it investment. The Senor Constantino has paid $5 million, and he promises to forget all about the treasure. You mean he leaves Kang and the Scarlet Queen alone from now on, huh? <laughs> yeah, that is right. <laughs> and we're supposed to swallow this, huh? I do not believe it. My dear girl, I ask you only to contemplate your immediate situation. If there were not clear horizons ahead for us all, would we be gathered thus in such uh, <laughs> amicable discussion? Well, I dare say you all know Mr. Constantino's tendencies toward uh, violence well enough to realize that we would not. I still do not believe I'll you. I'll lay off, Nanwa. But, Phil... You've said it enough. I think the colonel gets the general idea. Drop it. Where do we go from here, Colonel? Well, as far as I'm concerned, Captain, you and your company could return to your ship. But <laughs> it is the expressed wish of both Mr. Kang and Mr. Constantino that... Since they are together in Hong Kong, we remain together pending the completion of the negotiations. And rest assured, sir, Mr. Avila and I will make every effort to make it as pleasant as possible. I'll uh, be easy. Just show me to a room that's as far away from you as I can get. He <laughs> gets, sir. You're a brash one, aren't you? He was a tough one to insult, but it made me feel better anyway. They had very definite ideas about what would make my stay pleasant. One was that I needed company. Not Gallagher, but beautiful Oriental company. None who are. Another was that I needed a room locked from the outside, but furnished for relaxation with just such company. Including a bamboo bar stocked with an array of liquor perfectly suited for relaxing in just such a room with just such company. The only thing wrong with their ideas was that I had my own. <laughs> Angry with me, Phil? I'm fed up. I'm fed up with you. Your father, this whole fouled up mess. Phil, please, Phil, don't. Why not? I'm probably being tossed to the pot along with that five million. You don't believe that. And why don't I? If I don't believe that, why do I believe any part of it? I've never seen anything. I've been living on words. It sounded great in San Francisco. Ten million bucks. But in Squat Cow, I can't stomach it. It won't stay down. Ten million bucks. I'll have to see it to believe it, and I haven't seen it. Phil, please. The value is much greater than not that. Not from where I sit. Not from what I've been through to get where I am, locked into this hole with you. Oh, I'm sorry, So Phil. am I. When this one is finished, Tang and Son can find themselves another sailor. I don't like the way it's being played. <coughs> we did not make a mistake in you. Well, then I did. But what will we do, Phil? It's up to you. I just know I've been slugged and shot at for the last time. I just know I'm through sailing after that phantom pile of junk. That phantom pile of junk. Perhaps you should know what makes up that phantom pile of junk. 
that in it is the story of China. That's fine. It's very pretty. In it are relics passed down through the eight historical periods. There are two ivory tablets from the Yin Dynasty, which existed before the year 722 B.C. Upon them are carved the first and second of the sacred formula. Yeah, that's fine, too. <laughs> that mean much to me, though. There are chests of jewels from the courts of Zhao and Jin. There are great gold incense and from the temples of Tang. There are treasures from every dynasty. Phil, what my father is attempting to recover for our country cannot be measured in terms of money or even in terms of life and death. Perhaps if you would stop thinking of it as merely ten million dollars. I don't think of anything except that I'm fed up. Then, then of course it, it is better that you do not go on with us. Our... I'll get you out of here and start at Hong Kong or Shanghai or any place you want to go, but that's all. You can find somebody else to dig up the story of China. Slugging her would have been easier for both of us than the cellar. But it was my idea, so I stuck with it. The hardest thing for me to take was her acceptance of it. The cool dignity that crept over her. And the inbred pride that, like the inn tablets with the sacred formula, had been passed down through the eight historical period. But it worked. Two silent, uncomfortable hours after dark, the door was opened slightly. And a familiar, smiling face looked in. Oh, a most admirable Captain Carter. What do you want, laughing boy? Uh, my desires are simple. But I am once more waited with order from high office. You will come. How about the girl? Jerry's lady will remain in protective custody. Rest easy, Nana. I'll see you later. Huh? What's up, laughing boy? Oh, fortune smiles upon you. No? Although the smile is hidden behind the fan of kingfisher feathers for sake of delicate secrecy. Uh, with the stealth and silence of a hunting spider, you will follow me. Where are we going? On sudden regrouping of thoughts caused by mention of hunting spider, I will follow you. Please to quickly tiptoe rearward in the hallway. I couldn't quite figure the stealth act. But the rest of it was right for a while. We slipped out of a rear door. Holding to the shadows, we stumbled across about a quarter of a mile of field. Then we turned toward the road, got into a car that was waiting for us. Twenty minutes later, we bumped our way back into town, avoiding the business district again. And the next turn knocked everything into place. We swung around a warehouse, and I saw the river. I shot a look at Laughing Boy, and he was smiling over his automatic again. And then we pulled to a stop on the dock next to the Scarlet Queen. What's this? A sudden sight of ship that brings great joy to loyal captain. A pleased to dolly aboard. Where's my crew? Uh, surrounded by most helpful conditions and honest guards in nearby warehouse. Any of them hurt? No, no. They are most cooperative crew in face of many weapons. Mm. Even handsome parrot was picture of calmness. Uh, please to remain unexcited and enter cabin, knowing that I will prevent intrusion. <laughs> Come in, me, Captain Carney. What are you doing on my ship, Avila? I wanted to talk to you. There are plenty of places to talk. Yes, yes, but none so good as this. In the city, there are too many who watch and too many who listen. This meeting between you and me would not be good for them. I don't think much of it myself. <laughs> You and I are men who are led by similar things, Captain. I think, too, we are pushed around by the same things. I wish you would sit down with me as a friend. I hope you know what you mean. No, I don't. <laughs> hey, I think you and I, we could be great team. How do you figure that? You've been checking my references or something? I have stayed alive for 31 years because I know men. Why don't you try making sense, Avila? <laughs> this afternoon, I learned to know you when I listened to how you talk to the girl, Captain. Huh? you got a lot of tricks, haven't you? Uh, when we put you together after the story about Kang and Senor Constantino, we thought we would hear something else. What could you hear that would do you any good? The position of that Chinese stuff, maybe? Oh, that would have been very good. For us, but not for you. Could have saved all of us some time. She doesn't know where it is. <laughs> uh, you know, I believe you, Captain Carney. Thanks. And I think maybe everything could be all right. I speak of what you say in that room. 
You told me one thing that I like to know. Mm -hmm. You told me that the only thing that uh, loyalty really counts with you is the one you have for yourself. I wonder if I do know what you mean. (laughs) I think you do. I have the same feeling about loyalty, so there is the similar. I am to Senor Constantino much the same as you are to Kang. High in the organization. Similar again. (laughs) You say you live long enough on words and promises. I am hungry for something more myself. Uh, We are much alike, Captain. (laughs) Why then are we fighting one another? We aren't. I'm not fighting anybody over it anymore. I just want to get out of Swat Tower, that's all. You can have everything I know about it, which is nothing. (laughs) Again, I believe you. Again, thanks. Yeah, but, Captain, don't you see the possibilities? You and I pulling the strings. It looks the same, but the big ones are now working for us. Then, after the treasure and you and I disappear, they find out, but it is too late. (laughs) Yeah. And after you and the treasure disappear, I find out, but it is too late. (laughs) Oh, no. It is no good that way. We work together. Who else is in on it? Uh, the colonel. Mike Forrester? Mm. And it's no good. Too many people. Oh. Well, how about your chief mate, Gallagher? You leave him out? Yeah. It's got to be just the two of us or it's no go. Mm. Can you send the colonel back to Hong Kong? <laughs> uh, Captain Carney, I think you don't trust me yet. I mean what I say about this plan. I will do everything I can to make you trust me. I will leave the colonel out. I will send him away tonight. Then, when you get rid of your mate... We will be partners, no? That's right, Avalon. Mm. Then it'll be you and me alone. <laughs> yeah, that's good with me. Ligny! Ligny! One more thing for you! Uh, you call me Arthur from Toba. Si. Go to the colonel. Tell him to come here. Tell him Avila has a very important thing for him. In the cabin of the Scarlet Queen. <laughs> I figured I'd done pretty well with what I had to work with in Swatow. At least I'd had the right instinct about their friendly approach and their wild lie about Kang and Constantino. And my sellout act with Nanoa had the reaction I halfway expected anyway. But finding Avila on the Queen and alone instead of with the Colonel was something that didn't quite fit. It fell into place an hour later. The car got back. And we heard the Colonel coming aboard. This is big test, Captain. This is the first thing we do together. That's right, Avila. Well, well, I presume we've met with success in us. Avila. Say, what's the game, Avila? Hey, put down that weapon, sir. The captain, he says I must send you away. Avila. Avila. Have you got enough? No, you like it, don't you? The big test, captain. I do this bad thing only to show you you can trust me. Now you show me how I can trust you. Linny, one more trip. This time you bring the chief mate, Mr. Gallagher. That next hour was the shortest one I've ever spent. Avila never took his eyes or his gun off of me. Toward the end of it, he pulled a chair into the center of the cabin, facing the door, gestured me into it. Then he pulled another one up behind me and sat down with the muzzle of his gun resting against my spine. Then he handed me my own automatic. By that time, we'd stopped talking. We just sat there, waiting for the sound of Red's feet on the deck above. But the hour passed and we still sat there. An hour and five minutes. An hour and ten, Red still didn't arrive. An hour and twenty, an Avila took the automatic out of my hand. An hour and thirty, he expressed himself foully in Portuguese and stood up. How many men did you send after him? Enough. I don't think you did. The men were enough. Yeah, maybe, but they didn't come back, did they? <laughs> and that is very bad for you, Capitan. I think maybe there was a trick. I think maybe it started from you. You're crazy. You've been dealing this game. How could I pull anything? Use your head. Wait. Let's go. Listen. Car. Oh, good. <laughs> now things will be equal again. You will stand over to the side, Capitan. I moved a few feet and stopped started inching back, trying to get into a position for a rush just as the door opened. But I never made it. It wasn't Avila that stopped me. It wasn't that I was too late. It was the voice from the deck. It was the laughing boy. Mr. Avila. And he was alone. Mr. Avila. We are troubled with bad fortune. What happened? The certain one, Galaga. He is made from the certain part of nine devils. What happened? My face is gone. In 
spite of the extreme heaviness of your orders, we could not bring him to the ship alive. What'd you do to him? Is he hurt? Not unless he has fallen from his great height. He is flying in the wings of intoxication. Come on, fool! Get back to the car! Go ahead, Captain. Follow him. Yeah. With luck, maybe he's left a drink for us. The building on the river was as quiet as a tomb when we got out there. I didn't know whether Lin Yi was smiling or not as he let us in. But I knew I wasn't. Avila followed. A scant ten inches behind me with the muzzle of the automatic in the same spot in the middle of my back. When we got to the room I'd shared with Nanhua, we stopped. Lin Yi edged away from the door as though he expected it to explode in his face. Uh, since my face is already gone, I shamelessly hesitate before the den of the tiger. Captain, I would lead myself if I could keep this gun in your bag at the same time. <laughs> Go ahead. I opened the door expecting to see the room torn to shreds. But it wasn't. I expected to see the bamboo bar covered with empty bottles, but it wasn't. I expected to see Gallagher sprawled out on the floor, but he wasn't. He was sitting next to Nanhua on a low couch, and they both stood up as we came in. <laughs> Hello, Skipper. We've been worrying about you. Yeah. I've had a few uneasy minutes myself. One more, Captain. Wait a minute, Avila. Before you start thinking about pulling that trigger, I ought to warn you that you'd be the next one. Then you. Over, over here. Keep this to cover. Uh, please to accept a refusal. Having found higher personage who has more weighty order. Then you lose your skin for this. Most unfortunate words have been spoken. Now rapid steps must be taken to save skin. Oh. Lin Yi's rapid steps would have looked good in Madison Square Garden. He hit Avila below the knees in a rolling block from behind. Uh-huh. I went down at the same time. For a split second, the three of us were tangled on the floor. I got up first, put the arch of my sea boot across the wrist above Avila's gun oh. hand. Then I kicked the gun across the room with the other foot. Oh. I let him get up. When he was straightened, I hit him with every ounce I had. Oh. Maybe it was relief after having that gun in my back for so long. But I didn't wait for him to come back to me. I went after him. Maybe it was just the temper that goes with the name Carney. Once for a while, I forgot there was anyone else in the room but Avila and me. Or in the world, for that matter. <laughs> you need any help, Skipper? Shut up. Oh, Colin Capitan, you have the admiration I cherish for those of great heroic action. <laughs> Calm down, Skipper. You got it out of your system, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess we can go now, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, oh, non I, I guess you understand that sellout act I handed you, don't you? Yes, Phil, I, I understand now. Ah. Shall I apologize for believing you? Uh, no. It's a good thing you did. It wouldn't have worked if you hadn't. And you, laughing boy. Oh, oh, oh admirable, never laughing captain. Huh? <laughs> I'm surprised at you. You know, you, you double cross with the best of them. Oh, oh no. Huh? <laughs> Is instead most real sincerity after overhearing true story of great Chinese treasure. Uh. From perfected mouth of Nan Hua, even greater Chinese treasure. Uh, I have spoken. <laughs> you sure have. <laughs> I now return to a protective custody of my position in Swatow Police uh-huh. before one who is now prone awakens to new dawn of hateful anger. <laughs> I ate the next morning after I'd apologized for the 12th time for my sellout act and explained for the 13th time that I knew Kang wasn't in Hong Kong selling out to Constantino. We got Nanhua space on Air Cafe to Shanghai. I freed my crew with the help of Laughing Boy and gave him a handsome parrot as a parting gesture. And an hour later, we coasted out of the River Han into the deep rolling water of the South China Sea and the trades whistling up from the lower latitudes. with a will and snapped to their position to the main sheet. With four feet, make sail! The big, strong expanse of the mainsail climbed up the mast toward the morning sky, filled with the wind, and stretched out and pulled. And the ship sheet, men! Starting now! The ship sheets cracked 
locked into place. And the mizzen swung out. The Scarlet Queen buckled down to the beam wind crossing. How do you feel, Skipper? Better, Red. Better with every mile that goes astern. <laughs> well, there's plenty of them out there if you want them. Where are we bound? Well, I got a little surprise for you, Red. Huh? Tang told me that if we ever ran into a stone wall like Quatau, we would have head east. <laughs> well, fine. Let's take a little cruise someplace, just for a change. Shall we, Skipper? Huh? Where'd you like to go, Red? Brooklyn. <laughs> That's a little too easy. Would you settle for Manila? Hey, you really mean it? Sure. <laughs> I've said it to myself. I'll say it to you, Dad. You're the most understanding skipper I've ever sailed under. Why, sure. I even take a little nip on watch once in a while. When my mate gets around to offering it. <laughs> That's easy. Drink, skipper. That's better. After you, mate. After you. <laughs> Log entry, the catch Scarlet Queen, 5.30 p.m. Miles traveled, 8,754. Wind brisk, sky fair. Sea cresting, mainsail and mizzen reef. Ship secure for night. Signed, Philip Carney, Master.